Here we have a quick overview of the current status of Sentient Sciences Digital Clone for Engineering product for uh, modeling drivetrains and predicting the life of the components that comprise those drivetrains. Um, we'll kind of walk through um, the full set of features at a high level. Um, we're going to use as inspiration for this demo a uh, coaxial main gearbox for a helicopter that's described in this patent document I'm showing here. Uh, so we've got input from the dual engines coming in through this bevel gear that drives a shaft with uh, two sun gears on that same shaft. On the upper rotor, the ring gear is fixed to this static mast and the carrier rotates the top rotor. On the bottom one, the carrier is fixed to the static mast and the ring gear rotates the bottom rotor. Um, that's what we're going to try to build or what I've built here in the interface. So we've got a, a drag and drop interface to assembling a drivetrain uh, for a multi-body dynamics analysis of the loading and contact conditions of the individual components. Uh, to construct this, we have several different apps that support um, creating the system level components. So we've got a app for creating planetary gear components with uh, some detailed help section here to show what the various dimensions are. It's um, all the different parameters that go into defining both the, the gears inside the planetary um, set along with uh, parameters that define the geometry of the carrier. And then we estimate some of the uh, inertial properties here. We can make some specifications about the bearings that support the planets, get a nice visualization of what that uh, gearbox looks like, and then generate the component for incorporation into the system model. And so you can see two example planetary gear sets here corresponding to the two in that patent document that I just showed. Uh, we've also got helpers for making shafts. So this is quite a simple one, but uh, we can define different inner and outer diameters at different lengths. These are just comma separated lists that sort of give a parametric way to define the shaft, along with where there's different connection ports on that shaft and its relevant uh, mechanical properties and density and other things here. And again, we get a visualization. We can use that inside the system model. So we've got a number of different shafts here. We've got one that represents the upper mast, one that represents the lower mast, one that represents the static mast. We've got the driver shaft that comes in and drives the two sun gears. You can see those connections. Here's one here to a sun gear. Here's another one to a sun gear. And then we've got the shaft coming in uh, that drives this bevel gear pair that's down here. Um, so for the bevel gear, we've got a bevel gear component generator. We've got some gear parameters that go up here, some uh, discussion and help files that show how those things uh, become assembled in the system model and then other parameters here that correspond to some of the gear geometry uh, parameters. Again, we estimate mass and inertia, and we get a nice visualization of what that uh, spiral bevel gear pair looks like in this case. Um, similarly, we have a, uh, a bearing maker. Um, so you can see we support many different kinds of bearings, cylindrical roller, various ball bearings, tapered roller bearings, spherical roller bearing, uh, with uh, some different formulations. So we can have rigid, linear flexible, nonlinear flexible. So the difference being linear flexible has a constant stiffness matrix, the nonlinear varies as the uh, bearing rotates. Um, we get all those parameters in for the geometry. We can estimate the ISO 281 lifing parameters from that, or they can be put in manually if you happen to have those. Uh, and again, get a visualization of what that bearing looks like. Um, so this uh, particular one, I think, was the tapered roller bearing. So here's two tapered roller bearings supporting the lower mast. Um, and then we've got a cylindrical roller bearing and a ball bearing supporting the upper mast. Got some ball bearings down here supporting this uh, mast that has the sun gears on, or the, the shaft with the sun gears. And then we've got a ball bearing and a cylindrical roller bearing supporting this uh, shaft that's coming in uh, as a driving force. Um, you'll also notice that we have got um, various uh, sources and sinks that can be used. So here we're basically putting a constant speed input here. Uh, one thing to note is that we've got a parameterized uh, speed, and I'll show how we define those parameters later. Um, we've also got this um, viscous damper load on the end of each of these shafts. Um, this can be defined in a much more complicated manner, uh, time varying, for example, uh, to, uh, to correspond to what you might expect for rotor dynamics in a helicopter. Um, We've also got various sensors that can be attached at different points in the model to pick out some different data points. So here I've just included a torque sensor in between the uh, constant speed source and the first driver shaft. 
and then attached a probe to it so that I can understand what the torque is that's going into the system, just as, just for demonstration. Um, and then here was, is a, one of those parameter blocks. And so we can define all these custom parameters and perform calculations in order to um, make automatic uh, adjustments to what these parameters are for each individual uh, component. So here on these viscous loads, I've got a parameter called load free. And so in this block, given the gear ratio, the desired rotor speed, and the desired uh, power to be input to the system, I compute the input speed and what these load free parameters should be. Uh, in order to achieve that combination of rotor speed and in input power. Um, and then in this case, you can see that uh, what I've chosen as default parameters here, and what I'll show a simulation for is a thousand horsepower uh, input uh, for a one RPM uh, rotor speed. Um, so we've got the ability to drag and drop this model together, and then we can run that model. One of the nice features of the software is the ability to get a 3D visualization of what that model looks like. And that's represented here. So you can see the, the input, uh, input shaft here with the bevel gear pair. You can see the couple of ball bearings that are supporting the shaft with the common, the shaft that has the sun gears on. Uh, you can see the two different planetary gear sets here, as well as the tapered roller bearings. Um, we are able to do some transparency and cutouts to make things more visible. So the outer race on these tapered roller bearings is, is transparent. Um, the, Mast here corresponding to the lower mast has a cutout of 180 degrees so that you can see the inner workings. Similarly, uh, this static mast here has a cutout so that we can see what's going on, and then this represents the upper mast here. Um, we have the ability to display um, arrows that kind of represent the direction and magnitude of the reaction forces and reaction torques on the individual bearings and gears, and that's what these red and green arrows are. And this is all animated. And so if I click the play button, you can see starting from zero speed uh, going up to full speed at the end, what the rotation looks like. And you'll notice that we've got the rotation on the top going in the uh, counterclockwise direction if viewed from the top down, and the bottom one is going the opposite direction. So indeed, we've got a counter rotating uh, gearbox here. And you can tell uh, just visually that the uh, rotation speeds appear to be the same, just opposite in direction. And so this is a, a handy tool to, um, number one, make sure your model is assembled correctly. Uh, number two, to create nice videos. If you use this button down here, you can export a movie of this for inclusion in presentations. It can be an ABI file. It can be a GIF uh, for simple inclusion as an image, um, what have you. <clears throat> uh, but then also using these arrows, you can get a, a kind of the smell check on whether uh, everything is pointed in the direction you expect it to be pointing. So is everything behaving the way that you expect it to behave? Um, so in addition to these 3D visualizations then, um, you can plot some of these various quantities here. So uh, let's see, I have, this is my torque input uh, sensor with the probe on that I put in there. So uh, the torque in the, uh, this is in the global one direction uh, is uh, about negative, uh, 10,500 or so, negative 11,000 um, for, uh, for that input between the speed driver and this input shaft here. Uh, similarly, you can plot all sorts of different dynamic quantities from the different components. So we don't even have to include a probe like I did. Uh, each component, as you can see in the list here, comes with its own set of parameters that are automatically uh, output into the, uh, uh, for later consumption uh, in this uh, uh, viewer here. Um, so some of the other things that we have then, um, in addition to, in addition to the ability to uh, conduct that analysis and, and view the results, you can also run what's called the system analysis. And so if you do this, you specify the, the transient time you expect in the system and then how long to simulate after that transient time. And when you do so, you can plot all sorts of results, both in the time and frequency domain to understand what, what that looks like in terms of response. Um, for the bearings that were created, uh, when given those ISO 281 parameters, you can also get a, a readout here of the cycles and the hours in terms of the L10 life according to the ISO standard for those components. Um, and then if you have a modification factor, that will be incorporated as well, um, along with the different uh, dynamic load um, capacity, um, equivalent load, axial and radial forces, and then the factors that are used, the speed and the exponent in the L10 lifing equation. Uh, so you get all the data that you need in order to look at that L10 life. And then we also give a graphical output here uh, so that you can see sort of what are your highest risk components according to the ISO standard in terms of 
uh, which ones might uh, require a revisiting uh, redesign in order to uh, meet the life requirements. And then all this data can be exported into a Excel sheet that contains all the information that's shown above. Um, similarly, we, when the system is parameterized like we have it, there's another system batch analysis app where you can specify uh, a whole list of different combinations of parameters for each of those name parameters or values for each of those name parameters and then run the entire list of simulations all at once and, and gather the results and see a whole response surface for what that looks like. So um, after we've got our system analysis and we understand from a system level, what do the loads look like on the gears and bearings, we've added some tools then to do detailed gear and bearing analysis. And so uh, this is the, the gear analysis program here that I'm showing now. So given all the gear geometry, um, as well as uh, general gear parameters, and then some loading information. And again, this loading information can be input directly or it can come from a system analysis result. So if we had a, a gear pair here that we wanted to specifically explore, we could take that result directly from the system analysis and plug it in here. And then we can run the, the gear analysis and get all sorts of useful information about uh, what's going on for that gear pair. So we've got uh, contact lines uh, over the flank, we've got contact pressure, uh, radii of curvature, surface velocities, uh, normal force, contact pressures, uh, contact width, and, and transmission error, and other quantities that might be of interest for, um, for the uh, design of, and analysis of the gear. And then this input also um, can be, um, or this can be exported in order to import into the comp computational life prediction app, which I'll show in a little bit. Similarly for, for bearings, so we've got several different bearing analysis apps corresponding to different kinds of bearings. Within these apps, again, you've got the flexibility to be very specific and very detailed in the design of the bearing uh, in terms of the geometry um, <clears throat> for inner ring, outer ring, uh, rollers, uh, all the different geometrical elements. Uh, we can specify the material here, uh, specify some of the tribological properties that are relevant and then get a nice visualization of that bearing to see what it looks like. And then finally down here, we can apply loads. Again, we can apply them uh, directly within the software here, or we can take loads that were uh, computed in the system level analysis and use those loads on the bearing here. Uh, run that simulation. Um, when that simulation is done, we've got a bearing analysis post-processor app. Uh, so you can see here, this is the result of that uh, demo analysis that I just uh, showed. So we've got a visualization of the, the 3D overlay of the, uh, the forces on the inner race, outer race uh, in the axial and in the radial directions. We've got plots of kinetic energy in the bearing. This is a fully dynamic, multi-body dynamic simulation for each bearing, treating each different element as, as, um, as its own body. Uh, so there's no assumptions here on the dynamic quantities, basically. Uh, we can plot various states that are going on in terms of the uh, positions, angular speeds, accelerations, forces, et cetera. And then we've also got um, distribution plots here. So you can see uh, here's a wear indicator plot um, around, the, um, around the diameter of the inner race uh, at different axial positions along the race. We can do the same thing for sliding velocity. Uh, we'll just take a second here and we'll show that. <clears throat> And then uh, that's the sliding velocity profile. And then similarly, we've got one for the, uh, for the contact pressure. We'll wait for that one to load just to show what that looks like as well. Okay. <clears throat> so that represents sort of the, the gear and bearing analysis that comes after the system level analysis that's computed. And then of course, uh, some of Sentient's key um, technology is the ability to do a material science-based evaluation of what the life of these components would be. Uh, so given these detailed loading conditions that we compute, and then also given material um, information that's uh, acquired through characterization activities of, of samples. Um, so this is the component life prediction app. <clears throat> there is a login screen here, so each user gets a login, and that serves a few different purposes, uh, primarily, that these component life prediction calculations uh, require some sort of HPC resources. Uh, they are quite computationally intense, and because we're trying to compute several different failure data points, we want to parallelize that as much as possible as well. So each user will get a, a login and password here, and they'll log in. 
um, for setting up a CLP run. So we've got loads. Um, these loads can come from the bearing analysis, from the gear analysis. We've got a general elliptical contact analysis that can be used for, for RCF, general type RCF calculations as well. Um, after we've got our loading information, we, we choose material properties. So currently we've got a predefined library of, uh, of several materials here that can be used in the analysis. Uh, this library is expandable for each customer. So we, we can um, uh, include as many materials as the customer would like. Uh, if they provide us samples, we've got information on how we can uh, expand that library. Uh, we've got the ability to specify some of the parameters relative, relative to the lubricant. We've got some predefined things for 23,699. Uh, otherwise, a user-defined uh, lubricant is uh, provided as well. And then for super finish, again, we've got some pre-populated ones for brown and isotropic super finish. But all these parameters are tailorable by the user. So once the simulation has been set up, the user gives it a name, defines how many failure points they want to compute. Uh, what they want to define as sort of the suspension time, and then submits that off to our servers uh, running on AWS. Um, once logged in, the user can hit this refresh button and it will populate a list of all the CLP jobs that they have currently running or run in the past on the server. Um, here I've stored one uh, locally and I've loaded it manually here, so we've got a CLP test example. Um, we get a job status, some other information that's relevant to tracking that job out on AWS. Um, we get a readout here of all the parameters that were used uh, in terms of setting up that CLP run. And then we conduct a YWL analysis on the results that come out. And so you can see the, the data points plotted down here along with the, the blue solid uh, YWL fit. And then we've got the ability to specify a confidence level for that YWL fit as well, um, given what that, that bound would look like for different confidence levels. Uh, you can also see the YWL uh, shape, scale, location parameters here, and some fitting statistics to define uh, or to identify how well that fit uh, works. And then we've got uh, MTTF that's output as well based on that Weibull fit. Uh, and then down here, we've got the visualization section. Uh, you can choose to activate or deactivate various points. Um, and that will also um, refit according to the, the Weibull parameters that are chosen up above. So that represents the current status of digital clone for engineering. Uh, hopefully you can find it useful for your applications. Thank you very much.